Hi, now here we have an example on moments. And uh, if you'd like to give this a go, I'll give you time to pause the video, come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. So what we've got is a steel girder AB of mass 200 kilograms and length 12 meters. And it rests horizontally in equilibrium on two smooth supports at C and at D, where the length AC is 2 meters and DB is 2 meters. And we've got a man of 80 kilograms stands on the girder at the point P, where AP equals 4 meters. Now the man is modelled as a particle and the girder is modelled as a uniform rod. And what we've got to do is find the magnitude of the reaction on the girder at the point or at the support at C. So before we start then, what we need to do is mark in some of the forces that are acting on the girder. Well, we've got first of all the weight of the girder and its mass is 200 kilograms. We're assuming that the girder is modeled as a uniform rod, so that weight is going to act in the middle. So if we say that that's the middle, the weight's going to act downwards here, and I'll write that in as 200 g, g for the acceleration due to gravity, which I'm going to take as 9.8 uh, throughout the problem, okay? So we've got the weight of the girder. We've got the mass of the man is 80 kilograms. So the man is going to have a weight acting downwards on the girder. Okay, and that's going to be 80 G, 80 G Newtons. We've got the girder resting on these two supports at C and D. So we're going to have two reactions from them. We're going to have one up here, okay, and we're going to have one up from here. Now they're going to be different reactions, so I'm going to call this one the reaction at C. So I'll write a little subscript there, RC, and that will be measured in Newtons. And this one we'll call this the reaction at D, and that will be measured in Newtons. So we've got no other forces acting on the girder. So in order to find the reaction at C, what I do is I take moments, okay, moments about a point on this girder. Well, if it's RC that I want, I certainly don't want to introduce RD into my equation. So the most sensible place to take moments is about the point D. So that's where we start then. We're going to take moments about D. So I'll write M there for moments about D. Now when you take moments, remember you need a positive sense. And I'm going to take the positive sense as being, let's say, clockwise. It doesn't matter which way you take it. The mathematics will work it out uh, in the question. But I've taken clockwise as positive because I can see that if I take moments about D, when I look at the moment produced by the force, the reaction here at C, it's going to want to turn in a positive sense. So it just keeps the equation, that part of the equation, positive. And I feel that's a good method. Now remember, in the past, some people I know have problems with moments, okay, figuring out which way things are going to turn. So what I suggest is, if you do have this problem, just take a ruler and imagine putting your finger here at the point, say, D, okay? Let's just illustrate that by putting your finger there. This is my hand there, okay? Not great, but I hope you get the idea. Put your finger there on that point. So when we start with the forces wanting to turn about the point D, let's start with this reaction at C. What we're going to have is this force, okay, pushing in like so. So if you were to push in this direction, okay, this is going to be the force RC. If you're pushing that direction, then the ruler would want to turn around in a clockwise sense. 
So it's going to be in the positive sense. So the moment, remember, is the force times the perpendicular distance back to where we're taking moments about. So it's going to be RC, the force, okay, multiplied by this distance across here. So what is that distance going to be? Well, you've got two meters here, you've got two meters off the end here, so that means that this distance in here, because the whole length is 12 meters, must be 8 meters. Okay, so we've got RC times 8. And then let's take another force. Well, well, let's take, say, the weight of the man. That's 80 G. So if it's going downwards, so if you were to, say, push in this direction on the ruler, it would want to turn the ruler in an anti-clockwise sense. So anti-clockwise would be in the negative sense. So it's going to be minus the force, the weight of the man, 80 G, multiplied by the distance back to D. So we said that, uh, well, you can see that you've got four meters here, you've got two meters here, that's a total of six meters, so the distance from the man to D has got to be six meters. So that's 80 G times six there. The next force is the weight of the girder. Okay, so uh, again, if we were to simulate that on our ruler, we'd be pushing down in that direction. And again, this would want to turn round in an anti-clockwise sense, in the negative sense here. So that's going to be minus, we've got the weight here, 200 G. Okay, now we need to multiply it by this distance back to here. Because this acts in the middle, it must be six meters from here back to B, but that's two meters, so therefore from here to D must be a distance of four meters. So it's 200 G then times four. Now I've taken all the forces except D, because if you push, try and push the ruler at this point at D, it won't have any turning effect. The ruler would just stay still, okay, because this force passes through the point that you're taking moments about. So this is the total moment of the system. And because this girder is in equilibrium, that total moment must be equal to zero. Okay, so it's just now a simple case of solving this equation for the force RC. So if we tidy this up, what we therefore have is 8RC here. And then if we work out minus 80G times 6, and then minus 200G times 4, you'll find you get minus 1280G, okay? And that's going to equal 0. So if we add this term, 1280G, to both sides, and then divide both sides by 8, you're going to get RC equals 1280G divided by 8. And if you work that out, you get exactly 160G, okay? Or if you take G as 9.8, you'll find you get 1568, okay? And that would be measured in Newtons. Okay, so we'll just put a note here that I'm taking G, okay, the acceleration due to gravity as 9.8 meters per second per second. Okay, so there you go. Hope you've been able to follow that. Don't forget there's more videos on moments if you just look in the index on my website, examsolutions.net.